as promised, we are going to look over the audio system for the Tiki Part 2. One of the first steps is we always do tests and verifications in small steps. Uh, to the power supply main chassis here, I have installed the uh, Uno. It's going to be the controllers for a lot of the servos, things like that. Prototype board has been installed on the top to mount a lot of the uh, other electronics. Now, after verifying that the chip would not overload the Uno power supplies, it is now over here we're going to tap off 3.3 volts from the Uno. What I've done is lifted the power supply that was used before. Not only that, I've pulled the fuse on on the 5 volt supply that fed it. So for sure, the chip was being loaded and power supplied only by the Uno. I've gone through and checked it with the meter, verified the voltages. The, uh, the consume voltage while it's running, like right now it's running, playing through a speaker. And uh, also stopped driving the LED and rechecked the LED drop and the milliamps consumed by the LED. The Uno only has 50 milliamps of power and we'd like to keep at least half of that uh, to ensure it doesn't uh, eat away its lifetime. So, uh, checking that, uh, it looks pretty good and now we have a video showing the Uno being fed from the 12 volt power supply as shown right here. And then the proto board here. And these circuits will just be shifted to the proto board here so we can compact the electronics and uh, be more efficient with the design. Now, for some more details of the audio system, they're showing the base under construction of the Tiki. The Tiki mast will be mounted on the flat surface at the top. There is a speaker box built to house the speaker, make it nice and rigid. Uh, bring out some of the base if possible and use the top as a soundboard. You notice that the thickness of the dimensions here are about four inches. This double the height of the actual electronics. The electronics will go in the base. The holes here are drilled for some ventilation. The back will be open also with side ventilation pieces. The electronics will slide in the back and stay mounted underneath with plenty of room for air to get to them. Uh, the watts loss calculation of it is, uh, at this point, not very much. The uh, total wattage of the power supplies themselves are only about 35 watts. So uh, at the heat, it would be expected to be much less than that. But just to be safe and make sure that we have plenty of cooling and room for additional devices. Tiki Audio System Part 2. Now the audio system is working fairly well and what we're doing now is installing the VU meter which is a digital bar meter showing the power output and it's been installed into the Tiki torch. There's the Tiki torch. In the lower half of it has been installed LEDs. There's a special chip here. This is a VU meter chip and it was very very easy to use and set up. Now the first thing was was put into the breadboard and proto board and tested with the LEDs on the proto board. Then the next step is to wire it up into the Tiki and retest and make sure everything looks good. And then the last part was to, to take the circuits off of the proto board and put it onto a real board and install it into the control system of the Tiki near the audio system. Since the triggering mechanism for the Tiki is not installed yet, we'll trigger it by grounding out the pin and the audio trigger.
continuing the evolution of the Tiki sound system and the VU meters. Now we can see very well that the Tiki VU meters are working fine now, but they weren't just a little while ago. As you see, the circuit from the proto board is gone. It used to be there, but it's no longer there because now it is here. It is this circuit here, right there. It's beautiful, isn't it? And using an LM3915 VU meter chip. Now we had already proven out the circuit on the proto board and then actually had moved the LEDs over to the Tiki and tested it and it worked fine. When I moved it here, bad news, it didn't work. Well, as we look at it, the LM3915 chip, the uh, audio input for the view meters, according to the black wire there, needs to be referenced to ground. But that ground is really a common to the power supplies coming to that chip. What's interesting is that whenever it was hooked up on the proto board here, we notice we have a signal called ground. But the ground here isn't really ground because this power supply does not have a three prong plug. It is only a two prong. So the ground is not really referenced to true ground. In the Tiki system, it truly is. The power supplies have a three prong plug from the AC coming in, they're solidly grounded, and the commons on all the power supplies, the 12 volt and the 5 volt, are grounded very solidly. Now, the interesting thing was that whenever it was on the proto board, I could ground the output of the amplifier and it would work fine. This is where I am tapping off the, the audio input for the chip. This is the speaker output. Now because the proto board was not really at the same ground as these, in fact it wasn't ground at all, when I set this chip to the ground, all the power supplies here reference their ground to the speaker output. So everything worked great. When I hooked it up here, it didn't work and I realized it was missing the ground. When I grounded this amplifier on either side, it was unhappy and would not work. So how do we fix it? Now this is where you have to spend some time and think things out and work with things. I had thought about it and what I needed to do was provide that ground, but at the same time allow, time, allow this speaker output to float. Now getting way back into my memory, I realized I have a kit from 1977 for an experimenter's kit. And it just so happened to have these crazy little things called audio transformers. Now you can see that I have the Tiki audio view meter system tagged into this. And what it does is that I can put the speaker input into one side of the transformer and the output I can ground and take it into the chip. Both sides of the equation are happy. The transformer is the solution. Now right now it's hooked up still to the kit from 1977 because I had to order some audio transformers and they aren't here yet. So at the end of the day we have a great audio system hooked up and we have to learn to sometimes uh, make adjustments and build things in pieces and then as we go together putting them together sometimes we have to make changes so right now it looks very good and it is working but I had to add some components now while we're here I'll point out a couple other little changes that have gone on as you can see I used to have this power supply tied to the music chip once I moved the WTB20 audio chip over to the processor board on top of the UNO I used the UNO power supply, I didn't need it, but I'm doing something else with it now. Again, I have some parts to get, but it's going to be with my dimmer switch for the LEDs on the front of the Tiki. I have so many LEDs, it lights up the room. 
So what I've done is I have a dimmer for some of them. I'll break the circuits up. So it's tapped off of 5 volts and it comes over here and there used to be a adjustment pot right there where you can't see because it's all fuzzy. But it was a 10 turn pot. A little blue pot like that. I removed it and the reason I removed it was I replaced it. See there's wires there now. All I did was I picked up a bigger pot and panel mounted it. And that's the only reason I moved it was I could use it for adjustment. And what this will do, this will power LEDs instead of coming from straight from the 5 volt supply which they're designed to do but they're very bright. I can now manually adjust it and dim it based on whatever the conditions are. Now it would be great to someday automate that and put the dimmer switches and automate made a thing based on photo resistors. But for this time I think I'm just going to leave it here because it's more convenient to have actually a little bit more fun to have it manual adjust. Now one of the things that's interesting too that if you've noticed is that this thing hasn't stopped playing. I haven't had to trigger it. I have actually put the prototype of the, the, the uh, motion sensor right here. And what it is, that teeny tiny thing stood up is the motion sensor circuit. And there's a small chip there. It's nothing but a couple AND gates. Very simple logic. What I'm doing is I tap off the sound chip. Whenever it's not busy, it lights a light. Right now the light's out saying it's playing a song. I bring that in to the circuit along with the uh, motion detector. So the output of this is right here and it goes back in so it tells it to play the next uh, selection that's in the file on the chip. So right now it's just set up to play some, uh, some song files I put on there as a test. So what's really cool is that we can sit here and watch it play and as long as I sit here and move around it'll re-trigger. So that, that's really the operating system we want for it. Now at the end when we've got this installed into the system, we won't have it directly tied to the chip. As far as the audio chip, we're going to tie it into the UNO. So the UNO can see it and just make some other decisions whether it wants to toggle it, or, toggle it or not. So once it sees motion, we can make some other software and choreograph some things. And the other things I'll also trigger and count the number of times it's triggered because we can vary what it does. So we're getting there on the system and it's uh, looking pretty good. And so here we are with the audio system for the Tiki, view meter, and the motion detector trigger. And just for fun, let's give one last demo as we approach the Tiki with the motion detector and set off the audio system. And at same time, later on, we'll add all the choreography to start lighting other lights and motions from the Tiki. Well, there it goes. Isn't that special? Well, thanks so much for watching the videos, and I hope you've learned something from it. There will be more following up as the Tiki makes more progress of being assembled and tested. Thank you. And I hope you have a great day.